This thing is just nuts. And it's really good at all sorts of stuff, especially playing games, and I really, really like it. Hey there, how's it going? I'm TechTweeb, welcome. Thanks for clicking on uh, whatever the heck this is. Mini PCs are great because they're the mini. They don't hog your desk space or gulp down all your electricity juice, but usually they're not exactly powerhouses. You can't expect desktop level performance from something you could literally juggle. Trust me, I've tried. The previous best mini PC that I've tested was the GMK Tech Evo X1. This little guy. Check out my review, link below. I love this thing. It had great performance, a perfect size, and a form factor that looked cool on my desk. I've had so much fun with this thing. I installed Bazite on it and tinkering around with Linux and SteamOS made me feel like I almost know what the heck I'm doing, which was a nice change. So when GMK Tech asked me to check out the Evo X2, I thought, oh nice, the, the X1, but slightly better, right? Nope, no, I was not prepared. I opened it up and I realized right away that this thing isn't exactly a mini. It's bigger than any mini PC I've tested. It hit kind of like an eight, two or three small mini PCs for breakfast. And then I turned it on and uh, holy crap, guys. This thing is a freaking beast. Not just for a mini PC, it literally outperformed my actual desktop PC, making me qu question several recent life choices. And the third surprise, uh, was there three surprises? I don't know. The, ne the, next, the next surprise is that this thing can actually game. Like seriously freaking game. There's a lot to talk about with this thing, which we're gonna do now. The GMK Tech Evo X2 is powered by the all new Ryzen AI Max Plus 395 CPU, which is a, a whole lot of letters and numbers there. And that's also a top of the line for a mini PC. It's a four nanometer chip with 16 cores and 32 threads and a bunch of other numbers. And it runs at 120 watts steady, but can uh, go up to 140 watts. Not only that, it also has integrated Radeon 8060S graphics. And of course, since it's 2025, we need to mention the AI stuff, the NPU, which is based on XDNA2 with 50 TOPS and performance up to 126 TOPS whatever that means. Apparently, it has more than double the performance of a desktop 4090 in terms of AI stuff, and it supports these LLM models. My version has 128 gigabytes of LPDDDDR5X RAM, onboard, non-upgradable, running at 8,000 mega things per second. And mine has two terabytes of PCIe 4.0 storage. It has built-in Wi-Fi 7, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, Bluetooth 5.4, and it comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed. I am a big fan of what GMK Tech has been doing with the design of their high-end mini PCs. The Evo X1 was absolutely gorgeous, except it still is, obviously. And the Evo X2 looks like its handsome bigger brother. I love the combination of the gray and the black, and that metal casing that's slightly larger than the core gives it a kind of futuristic mech vibe. It's sleek and stylish without any cheesy gamer aesthetics, except, except for the fan. The fan insists on spilling out some RGB nonsense. You can cycle through RGB options and you can turn it off, but annoyingly, it doesn't remember your choice after a reboot, so you gotta push that button every time. Not a huge deal for me since I usually leave my PCs running, mostly out of laziness, but still, high-end classy machines like this don't need RGB screaming, look at me, I'm amazing at video games. Size-wise, it's chunky for a mini PC, but it's not desktop huge. Maybe like a small form factor PC if you squint. It's still a mini PC, just a, just a big mini, like a like jumbo shrimp. On the front, there's a power button and a button to change the performance mode and a full-size SD card hole, interesting, and a USB 4 hole and a USB A hole and another USB A hole and a 3.5 millimeter audio hole. There's also a sneaky fan button under there that changes the RBG and you can hold it to turn that off. There's uh, lots of vent holes for airflow all around and on the back side we have two more USB A holes and a HDMI hole and a display port hole and another USB 4 hole which I like to see and uh, nice to have two of those with one around the back and another USB A hole and another 3.5 millimeter audio hole and a power plug hole. And speaking of which, the power adapter looks like this. It's rated at 230 watts, and it's actually pretty small, especially considering the juice that this puts out. Good job on that, GMK Tech. Actually, I, I take that back. Bad job, GMK Tech, because you did something that I hate. 
the screws to get inside are under these sticky rubber feet. I mean, can we just stop doing this, please? Every company ever? Well, just give me easy access to the screws. Especially since this is like a, a high-end machine made for professionals. Being, being able to swap SSDs around should be less messy than peeling off sticky feet. And speaking of which, once you get inside, you'll see the SSD in there and a second NVMe slot that's empty. I put my Bazite SSD in there for some dual booting fun. I had fun playing around with that. You also get access to the Wi-Fi card in here, but no access to RAM or anything else. The RAM is soldered to the board, so you don't you get what you get and you can't change it. And also there's no SATA drive support. The system is uh, pretty standard Windows 11. No antivirus stuff or bloatware other than the standard Microsoft bloatware, of course. The only extra thing worth mentioning is that there's this GMK Tech AI software stuff here, but it wants you to create an account and log in. So obviously I didn't bother with that because logging into stuff stresses me out. Apparently it's just basic AI tools like a translator and dictation and that sort of stuff. That might be useful if you like talking to your PC more than humans, but I, I personally didn't bother. I have a cat for that. Other than that, it's a clean, bare bones Windows experience without any extra stuff, which is exactly how I like my OS and my oatmeal. One nice feature is this little physical button for switching power modes. You got quiet and balanced and performance modes. If you're buying this PC, you're pro probably going to want to leave it on performance mode most of the time, I would think, because you bought it to like, you know, perform. But it is nice to have a physical button for this so you don't have to muck about with an app or whatever. Good for making the PC quiet when you need to as well. The BIOS is uh, pretty darn... Uh, old looking. It seems pretty bare bones to me. Um, I'm not super techie when it comes to BIOS options, so I don't know what to show you or what's important. So I just recorded myself quickly flipping through the pages. So uh, go ahead and pause the video on whatever page you want if you know what this stuff does. When it comes to the benchmarks, uh, th this, is, this is the good stuff right here. This will only be relevant to you if you know what sort of numbers to expect, but I do and it's kind of crazy impressive performance from a mini PC. For instance, in 3D Mark Night Raid, I got an overall score of 66,036. And in 3D Mark Time Spy, I got 10,805. This is equivalent to a desktop PC running an AMD 7950X with an RTX 3060 GPU. Now, obviously, it's not a top end gaming PC, but uh, th this is a gaming performance benchmark. So let's see something that shows off the raw CPU horsepower we got here Cinebench R23. And oh man, this is so cool. I ran this test multiple times just because I loved watching it go. Check this out. This is running in real time. If you're familiar with performance in Cinebench R23, this, this might impress you. We got a multi-core score of 36,809. That is absolutely insane. Not, not just for a mini PC, for any PC. For reference, my desktop PC with a Ryzen 5950X got a multi-core score of 22,913. I can get more than that if I switch some voltage stuff around, but not that much more. So for a mini PC, it's just, it's nuts. Oh, and this is my SSD benchmark results. The biggest number is 7,051 and the, the smallest number is 78, if, uh, if that means anything to you. And for the thermals, I got a max temperature of 98.3 Celsius, which only happened briefly when I was pushing it with the benchmark program. And I reached 140 watts on the CPU package, and my max core clock was 5,140 megahertz. The fan does kick on and it gets sort of loud when things get cooking, but that, that's to be expected, honestly. You're not going to have a quiet machine that can get these benchmark numbers. The fan wasn't crazy loud or anything, and it wasn't a high-pitched, annoying sound. It just sounded like a fan from a, a PC cooler, really. If the noise is an issue for you, when you don't need to push things hard, you can use the performance mode button to lower the temps and the fan a bit. You'll still get great performance, it'll, it'll just run quieter. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for a root beer break. <laughs> yeah, that was a good, good root beer break. And now the other moment you've been waiting for, let's play some games. All of these games are running in Windows at the max performance mode with the latest updated AMD drivers. I did play around with Bazite on here too, and uh, yeah, it worked. It just worked right away. 
and the performance was amazing, as always. I don't want to make this a Windows versus Bazai video. I already made one of those recently, and the results are the same here. Some games are about the same in Linux, and some are much better. But I, I stuck with Windows for these benchmarks because that's easier to compare with other devices and uh, other videos, really, because everyone always does benchmarks in Windows. Starting off, as always, with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is an older game, and it's not the most demanding game out there, but it's the game that I always start with, and it helps me get an instant feel for how a PC is performing. Usually on a mini PC, I'll have to lower the settings down to get it by playing at a good frame rate. Maybe I'll get like 60 FPS or whatever, but here on the Evo X2, that, uh, <laughs> that's not necessary. Here I am at 1080p on the highest preset, and I got 133 FPS on average. So obviously here we have headroom to go up a lot higher in the resolution. I was not expecting it to do this well. This monitor that I recorded this on was just 1080p, so I stuck with this, but I have no doubt that you'd be able to get around 60 FPS at 4K on this machine. No upscaling here either. This is just pure graphical horsepower at work. But there is one setting to take it to the next level. Ray tracing. I enabled that and I set it to ultra and yeah, look at that, 67 FPS on average. Now this is like a first generation ray tracing game. It's a, not the most demanding and I don't think this PC would handle advanced RT effects like path tracing or whatever. But, but even still, I remember when the dream of running Shadow of the Tomb Raider at ultra settings with ray tracing was only for those with the highest top end GPUs. Crazy that we can do this here on a mini PC. Next up we have Doom, the Dark Ages. This game is new to me. I'm not very far in, but I am loving it. It's hooked me more than Doom Eternal did. I love the heavy, crunchy combat in this one. I just got the chainsaw attachment for my shield here, and oh man, it was so much fun playing this. So I switched over to my 1440p monitor for this one, and I was surprised at how well it did. 81 FPS on average. This is with the Ultra preset. Balanced FSR, but at 1440p, that's a fine trade-off. The game looked amazing, and it, it played amazing. Also, Doom the Dark Ages has forced ray tracing, so this is all with RT enabled. Considering that this is a brand spanking new game, playing at 1440p with ultra settings and ray tracing and getting 81 FPS is pretty freaking impressive. You won't find many mini PCs that can do that. Going back to a classic game here. Cyberjunk 2077. And here's the thing. This game automatically chose the settings and it selected ultra ray tracing for me. So I was like, all right, fine. Let's see it. Let's see how it does. And it does uh, pr pretty good. 47 FPS on average. Totally playable with ultra settings and ultra ray tracing and freaking gorgeous. But you definitely pay the RT tax in a game like this. So I went and disabled ray tracing and then I just set it down to the regular ultra preset. And now we're getting 81 FPS like this. Cyberjunk was a super demanding game when it came out a few years ago, and it, it's still demanding if you get into like path tracing and stuff, but it just it blows my mind that a mini PC can run it at ultra settings with ray tracing and get it playable. I wanted to end with one more modern brand new game. So here's Assassin's Creed Shadows at 1080p with the high preset and balanced FSR, and we got 76 FPS like this. This game is no slouch. It's it's hard to run. It, it's, it's demanding. So this kind of performance is freaking awesome considering the settings we're using and how good the game looks. The Evo X2 is not cheap, which uh, it shouldn't surprise anyone. The base 64 gigabyte model is an introductory $1,499 and the 128 gigabytes of RAM top end model is $1,999. So obviously it's not cheap, but considering what it does and who it's for, th these prices actually start to make sense. If pure gaming is your goal, you'd pr you'll get better value from building a small form factor desktop with a dedicated GPU. But if you need serious horsepower for computing, video editing, heavy rendering, and if you want something to do that and also some gaming on the side, uh, nothing out there will give you as much power at, as this uh, gives you at this price, especially in such a sleek, compact form. Plus, your desk gets the added benefit of looking futuristic and cool. My biggest gripes, aside from standard mini PC limitations like upgradability and storage expansion, is mostly the fan noise. It's not terrible, but it is noticeable. And the price, obviously. As much as I want everyone to experience this glorious little powerhouse, if you don't need a CPU that can get over 36,000 in Cinebench, it's probably overkill. But if you do need what this does, if you're after the absolute best mini PC money can buy, the Evo X2 is it. And if you want one, there's a link in the thingy below. And if you don't need that, well then don't get it.
No one can tell you what to do, except me. And the only thing I demand is that you click the thumbs up button if you like the video. Or don't if you didn't. Whatever. I don't care. I'm TechMeme. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. Hey.